Hebrew month of Adar. And Adar is a happy month, a month in which all of Israel and through them the whole world is going to be happy. The question is, how can we be happy in the face of economic depression, which is what people are fearful of? And the answer is, you still have to be happy, even in a depression. But we don't have to fall into a depression as long as we keep a positive attitude. That doesn't mean things aren't going to be tough. It means that we will face them with enthusiasm and with the proper energy necessary to be able to deflect all of the blows that the times present to us. As such, I wish to present a solution to the economic uh, problems that face us. I don't mean this as a short-term solution. I mean this as a long-term solution. And if you like my idea, and you think my idea has merit, I'm asking you it does not have to be in my name. If it's a good idea, then please publicize it so that people will begin thinking differently. The reason for the economic collapse that we are facing now is because there exists a rot, something smells, in the economic structure that we have. And the thing that smells is selfishness and gluttonous. That doesn't mean that people shouldn't strive to be able to advance as far as they can. But the way in which the structure of the economic rat race exists, it allows for people to undermine the very healthful structure of the economy by their own pettiness and selfishness. From one side, socialism has given rise to labor unions, given rise to inefficiencies, to overburdened companies unable to maintain the costs of their product, causing tremendous upheavals in the ranks of the, common, of the regular worker, not common worker, but the worker. From the other side, capitalism has given rise to tremendous amounts of selfishness, which for a long time has been hidden from view but has become apparent with the revelations of the Madoff scandal, the Stanford scandal, and other scandals, and run, these are only symptomatic of the rot that exists in the economic system. The economic system, the engine for that is the desire to get ahead. But the question is at whose expense? And oftentimes, the desire to get ahead is we don't care about the consequences of how we get ahead, as long as we get ahead. Damn everybody else. And this exists at all levels in corporate America and in the world, in all levels of business. And so the question is, how can we create a more productive model where people are held accountable and people are happier and people are more cooperative the whole structure of capitalism versus socialism, management versus the unions, the owners versus the consumers, is such that people mistrust each other and try to get as much as they can from each other without realizing that in the process, somebody's going to get hurt. And so my suggestion is to throw away the way we do business up until now, to create different relationships, both in labor and management and the owners, called the stockholders in the business. And in the previous video, I outlined it, describing the difference between the day worker and the sharecropper. And it works like this. Instead of competing forces of labor and management and ownership, create a partnership. See 
labor and management as partners in the venture. And therefore, they also have a vested interest in the health and profitability of the venture. Profit sharing should become the basis for most of the compensation. However, there has to be a basic minimal compensation, both for workers and for management. And in order that management not be too unwieldy and exact huge salaries and concessions from the stockholders, which creates resentment and therefore creates unusual demands by the workers through the unions, have it that all contracts have to be ratified by both labor and management. Management's contract has to be ratified by labor. Labor's contract has to be, managed, has to be ratified not just by the stockholders, but by management as well. And in that way, when the man on the assembly line or the delivery guy has a voice as to what the president and the CEO should be making, then there isn't as much resentment. Then there's more cooperation. Let me give you also the formula of how I perceive profits to be divided. In order for there to be profitability, you have to have investment, you have to have managers for that investment, and you have to have the workers who carry it out. And there has to be a relationship between them and the profitability of the company. And what I'm suggesting is as follows. You can have other models using the same idea, but you can structure it differently. My idea is to divide profits in half between labor, management, and the shareholders, the owners of the company. The equity of the company is owned by the shareholders, but the profits are divided between the people working for the shareholders and the shareholders. This is after the people working, labor and management, get their salaries, basic salaries. But then, when the company is profitable, they will share in 50% of the profits, two-thirds for labor, one-third for management. In other words, a sixth for management, a third for labor, half for the shareholders. And this will reduce the cost of doing business because until you're profitable, you're paying at a, at a lower rate. If you're profitable, then this is the direct results of the people working for you and therefore you should share it with them. And furthermore, the relationship between labor and management will not be conflicting because labor and management have to get along. Labor has to do whatever management says because it's important for their own profitability. Nobody should say this is not my job because we're all in it together. And if people are not working efficiently, the, the workers themselves should be able to tell people to complain and get people off of the company roles if they're not being efficient with company time because they will be affected improperly if there's a person that's not doing his or her job. Same way, the labor will not be jealous of management because they ratify the contract. And because they ratify the contract, it will be reasonable, at least in labor's eyes. And then when they have profitability, everybody will be happy. And that should be the model for the new companies that will emerge or old companies reorganizing and restructuring. And if this works, and if this is good in your eyes, please spread the word, because we have to be happy. We're happier when times are better. We'll be happy regardless.